I think within the spirit of Protestantism and that protesting element, I think it's incumbent upon all of us really to continue to protest. I think in the best of in the best of, of that sort of Protestant Reformation tradition. My name is Anthony Reddy. I was born in Bradford, West Yorkshire. Um, my parents are from the Caribbean island of Jamaica. I came to Birmingham in 1984 to do a degree in church history and I've been here ever since. I presently work for the Methodist Church as a, as a learning and development officer. So really that's a theolog- uh, well, a regional theological educator. Um, I'm also a black liberation theologian written quite a few books on the subject, very much interested in the interface between theology and education, particularly what people sometimes people call critical pedagogy, which is really about, uh, about how we raise a consciousness of ordinary people and help them to see the world as God sees it through the lens of the kingdom. So my interest in black liberation theology um, is very much really around, not just as it, in terms of being a discipline, it has been a, an, an academic uh, piece of work. It's really about how does it impact upon ordinary people? How do we help people who are often from marginalised and oppressed contexts? So in my context, is mainly people of African descent, but not just that. Um, uh, um, actually, people from other faiths, people from, uh, from the margins of society. In what way do we help them to be more conscientised, to be, I guess, critically aware of the context in which they're in, and how does their faith speak to their social location? How does faith make a difference in people's lives and challenge the systems and structures that often impinge upon all of us? And 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 I think is I think make us slightly less human. So I guess part of partly why I'm here really is an invitation to speak back to the Reformation. So why so why does this event that happens in Europe 500 years ago, why is it relevant to people of colour, people from the global south, people whom probably Luther never had in mind when he was actually nailing his thesis to, the, uh, to that door in Wittenberg? Well, I would say that its relevance, really, is that it has helped to shape the world that all of us are in. That Luther's protest that gave rise to Protestantism along with other reformers has helped to shape the world, whether you're Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox, whether you're liberal, evangelical, progressive, whatever type of Christian you profess to be, or even indeed if you have any link to any kind of church, then clearly we are the heirs to the tradition that came about from the Reformation. And therefore I think it's relevant to us because it has helped to shape who we are. Ah, ah, ah. And although I think Luther didn't have black people in mind or people of colour in mind, there's no doubt that we have been shaped by that. We've been shaped by the missionary impulse that comes out of Christianity, particularly evangelical Protestantism, that we've been shaped by empire and mission that in itself actually comes out of that particular DNA and framework. And so therefore, I want to speak back to it. Not that I can change the past, but I can be aware of how that past has impacted upon me and people like me. I can be aware of how I frame my own set, my own life, my set of resistance, I think, against that. And I think thirdly, that if we understand the history of that event, and if we understand how it has indeed shaped the world, then it gives us then the possibility of then sort of trying to remake the future in ways that help us to build on the best of the past, but then actually, uh, I think, like to reject the worst of it. Well, at the heart of Luther's protest was these, I guess, these 95 theses that he, uh, that he pinned against like the door in Wittenberg, which really was his protesting and challenge to the Pope around significant things that he felt were wrong with the Christian faith as was then. I think within the spirit of Protestantism, and that protesting element, I think it's incumbent upon all of us really to continue to protest. I think in the best of in the best of, of that sort of Protestant Reformation tradition.
And for me, I guess what I've been protesting against have actually been some of the things that Luther helped to put in place. So, so, so for me, so the big one is that Luther stresses the importance of justification by faith alone. I think that's problematic, not because we shouldn't be justified by faith, but I think what Luther does is he puts in place this antithesis against works. So somehow doing good works is not important. It's almost irrelevant to the economy of salvation, that essentially like we're saved only by our faith in Christ, because what Christ has done is atoning work. The problem with that is, is that once you then eliminate the importance of doing good, doing good works, it leaves open then this weird contradiction whereby it doesn't matter what you do to other people. It doesn't matter how you behave in its, in its worst extreme. It only matters that you believe the right thing. And, and so the consequence of that, I think, can be seen in huge calamitous ways. So, for example, all the examples we have in the West, in the global North, where we have predominantly white conservative people who, have, who see no distinction, or should I say no contradiction, to be more accurately, between loving God and hating their neighbour if their neighbour actually has like the wrong skin. And particularly if their neighbour then has the wrong skin and believes the wrong things, then they're fair game to be hated. And the reason why they can hate them is because there is nothing within the economy of salvation that Luther sets out that, makes, uh, that puts any importance upon how you treat other people and what you do. Because that's works. Works doesn't matter, as long as you believe the right thing. So, so, for example, one of the areas of my study has been looking at slavery, the impact of slavery, and looking particularly at the belief systems of people who were slave owners and people who owned slaves and ran plantations. And many of them would have said at the time that they were good Christians. They would have said that they believed in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. They believed the right thing. They were indeed saved by faith through grace. The problem is that once you remove works from any type of equation in salvation, then what you're left with is this disembodied abstraction that says that, like, so you can love God, but can't be seen, but you don't have to love the people that God has given us, particularly if they have the wrong colour skin, who you can see and who are your neighbours. And, so, and, and, and that's what you end up with is slavery. In, our, in the last century, you end up at, at with the Holocaust. You end up with sensible German Christians in a, in a country, actually, actually a country where Luther came from, it's his country, Germany, that has probably the highest percentage of major theologians who have helped to shape our Western canon since Luther, and yet somehow can see nothing wrong with hating Jews and, even, and supporting a murderous regime that Hitler put in place, because so long as you believe the right thing, it doesn't matter that you don't do the right thing. And therefore, I think that's the central thing I've been railing against, that what we need is the importance of what liberation theologians will call praxis. Praxis is reflective action. And it's not just important to believe the right thing, it's important to do the right thing. In fact, I would go the other way around. It's more important that you do the right thing as an expression of what you believe, rather than the other way around, which is what Luther professed. 